fellow legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. Today I want to talk to you guys about the changing weather and how not to allow the rain to change your plans. Now, those of you who live in like Scotland and you know the northern parts of like the UK, you have a lot of this kind of weather this time of year. Down there in Houston, we got introduced to it last Sunday. If you guys remember, I did a group ride with Paul, which we loaded on the channel on Saturday. Well, the next day we rode at a lower uh, uh, intensity, a four hour ride in the rain. And we talking about a front that came through wind gusts. We, we basically had the, before we started the ride, the front came in around 7.15 or so in the morning. So we basically waited for the winds to abate and then we went out to ride. And what ended up happening was we had a great ride, but because it was so windy and it was rainy, yeah, we didn't cover a lot of ground, but we, we still had a good workout. The point I'm making is, if you are cooped up in the office and in the house all week, do not allow the rain to stop you from going out. You need to basically invest in the right equipment because I believe the, the reason why a lot of riders don't like to ride in the rain is because of the mess you have to deal with afterwards. You know, I, I have like, I've shown some shoe covers that I've done reviews on on here. I'll put the link there. You need to be able to cover your shoes to at least reduce the amount of water that will soak into your shoes. The shoe covers are not going to 100% keep water out if you're out for a long time, but they make a big difference in not only reducing the wetness of your shoes, but also keeping all that road grime off of your shoe to where you can just take them off, rinse them off, and your shoes are clean. And I will put a, a link, a video up here showing you how I basically dry my shoe and while I do this in post because I put my shoe on a, there's a Vornado heater and it blows warm air into the shoe. You don't want to put your shoes on like a radiator that will get really hot to where the shoe touches it and then it might melt the, the, the vinyl of your shoe or the ruin the leather of your shoe. What I use that you see in this clip is a almost like a fan that blows warm air. And you can get that if you don't have that and you want to get it. What I like about it is it's great. We use them in different parts of the house because the, the, the central heating does not heat every corner of the house. So the area, and this will heat up a room. So you can see what I did is I put it up against the, 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 the heater and within an hour or so, my shoes were dry. You do not want to put your shoes damp down in like a, 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 a closet or something. If it's sunny after your ride and you put it outside in the sun, you're good. But like today, the ride that I'm showing that, that we just did is that it was wet and then afterwards it was cloudy. So I had nowhere to put the shoes, so I used the heater because it's better. It was dry within an hour. If you don't do that and you just set them down, bacteria creates odor. That's why your shoe would smell, that dampness. And then you can have mold and other things growing in your shoes. So take out the insoles, air them out. Stick newspapers in there. That's another way. If you don't want to do what I showed you in the video, stick newspapers in there. It will absorb, absorb all the moisture from your shoe. Never put your shoe near a heating source that is hot enough to ruin the fabric of your shoe. Do not put it in an oven, definitely. You just want it around some kind of heating source. I showed that fan because the fan just blows warm air. There is no heating element in it. To light up or harm the shoe. So I put it around it and it was perfect. If you're going to put it next to a radiator, make sure if the radiator is one of those that gets hot to the touch, make sure the shoe's not touching it. Take the, 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 the soles out and just place it nearby so it doesn't touch it. You know, but sticking newspapers in the shoe is better than just setting it down because the newspapers will absorb the moisture of your shoe. It's the moisture that allows bacteria to grow and then you start, then the shoe has an odor because of that. Um, sometimes I even go as far as taking Lysol spray after the shoe dries and just spray it in there to kill whatever germs may be in there. But that's just me. Now, the second thing is, if you're using the proper equipment, the mud guards on your bike, that's another reason that 
you get more encouraged to go out because it does keep your bike clean. Here's a clip here that I prepared. Look at my bike after riding in the a deluge and you'll see what I'm talking about. I want you guys to look at my bike. I just got back. It has fenders on it from, from one of the messiest rides. You know, Usually, if I ride in the rain, this bike is filthy. I mean, even my chain, I can just wipe it and I'll be ready to go again because I put wet lube on it because I expected it to be wet this weekend. But look at the bike. The fenders work. Look at my, my covers. Little bit of, like, almost like specks of dirt. That, that's not even just from being out there. I mean, these are my POG3 uh, coverage, you know, overshoes. I want to just kind of show you guys. Overall, if you're on the fence about getting these fenders, I got the the stealth one and they're nondescript. These things work. You know, the back gets a little noisy when you hit bumps, but it just shakes and it doesn't get out of place. You know, those arms they have on there really keeps everything flat. I didn't have any problems with it. Again, so the fenders work. I mean, you know, they're not full fenders that come behind here, but they're covered. But uh, those of you who are on the fence, get yourself a pair of fenders if you're going to ride in the rain. So after watching that, that clip and watching the first, the one that I showed while I was uh, talking about how to dry your shoes, those are the two main reasons. If you have mud guards on your bike after your ride, as I showed in the little clip here, you will have very minimal cleanup. You can just wipe the chain. You're ready to use that bike again. And those of you who are in the UK, I believe that most of you guys do not allow riders to come and ride in the rain without mud guards anyway. So I think it's a great idea. I hate following riders that got that rooster tail of spray. I mean, it, it's just all in your, your face, your eyes, and, and there's dirt, you know. And if you ride without mud guards, when, you, when you're done and you take your, 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 your shorts, just put them in water. The water's black because all the dirt from the road is absorbed in your clothing. And then under your saddle's all gunky. So the mud guards work. There is no, if you're going to ride in the rain, you need to get them, Okay. The link, I'll put the link down there and I'll put a, a card here to where you can get it. And also at the end of the video, if you want, I put them on the website because these are some of the products that I really believe in and they work really well. So if you are somebody who wants to improve, you can't let the weather hold you back. Now, worst case scenario, get a trainer. I'll put a link to the trainer there too. You can get it from the same recommended cycling pro product site on our site. And the reason I recommend this particular trainer, the Super Magneto Pro, is because value-wise, bang for the buck, is right in the middle there. You don't need to spend $1,000 to get the quality. That trainer has a great road feel. It's easy to use. It's just great all around. So if you don't want to brave the elements, put your bike on there. I mean, I've, I've been known to ride six hours indoors, which is extreme. I mean, granted, I split it up, but still, that's a lot of riding. I mean, it was a day where we just had storms and lightning and all of that, and I was training for an event. And so, you know, it takes a lot of focus to do that. Many people can't do that. But uh, if you don't want to brave the elements, don't lose your program because of the weather. So you got the trainer, and if you want to go outside, you definitely want to have the right equipment. And you want a rain jacket. I'll show you what I use. When Paul and I went out, he, he rode towards my home and when he left home it was dry this was sunday when he left home it was dry when he got here the rain is i knew that he basically didn't have the equipment so i took an extra uh, uh booty for him a shoe cover and then i also took this and i had this one on either one of these are fine this is the old style they don't make these anymore this is an old thing made by castelli years ago it's got a little bit of breathability on the side, but it worked perfectly. They can see your kit through it. It was very nice. This is what we use. Very lightweight. So if the rain stops, you can fold it up and put it in your pocket. Both of these. Uh, this is a Pactimo. This was made by Pactimo, but you can just search for rain jackets. I like the lightweight one because you're not stuck in it all day long. Weather changes, you put it away. But this thing worked. It kept being dry. Okay, that you can't ask for more. And the... Piogia 3 shoe, or what I wore, Paul had an Endura, an Endura shoe covers. I will put the link to the videos down there, but I, I did reviews on those as well. And they work. They really keep your feet dry. Uh, you have to wear the right equipment if you're going to brave the elements 
because then you're equipped. Then you're not cold. You're not wet. So we had base layer on our team kit and these. And then we had a hat under our helmet because the temperature had dropped because the front came in that brought the rain. And so it was like in the 60s. And then with the wind, it felt a lot cooler than we were used to. So by staying dry and warm with these, we were able to, we stayed out there for almost four hours on Sunday in the rain. And you saw the video, you saw the bike. So, you know, if you have the right equipment, it won't, it won't stop you from going out. So I just wanted to post this out here to get you guys motivated. Those of you who are in Scotland and other parts of the UK, wherever you get this grimy kind of weather this time of year, don't let that stop you because what I found is when it's raining a lot, there are fewer cars on the road and they give you more room. Go figure. So get out there, get your miles in.